All right, let's check out this next video, Brian. Well, those those that are watching the podcast, I mean, listen to the podcast. You can't watch a podcast. I guess you could, but it'd be kind of boring. But if you're listening to a podcast, um, we just showed that somebody said, hey, I should be saving for the future. But then they flip to a screen and it's them like a nightlife and traveling. It's like, just kidding. I'm going to maximize uh-huh. today. That YOLO lifestyle. That I feel like this is all over. Once again, back to social media telling you, lifestyles of the rich and famous. You're like, what is that? I'm just telling you, that's what social media is. It is everybody's highlight reel on how awesome their life is to the detriment of you feeling like you are just not living the dream like everybody else around you. So here is the myth that's out there. You don't need to save in your 20s. You shouldn't have to worry about saving in your 20s because that's not the prudent decision to make. That's not the way that you ought to decide how to navigate your finances. And what's so interesting is that there are camps on both sides of this discussion saying this and reinforcing this idea because now there's this movement of what are called safe savers. Some are saying, hey, we need to say goodbye to retirement. A soft saving, in air quotes, is a trend emerging among young people saying, hey, you know what? I don't care about balling out in my 60s and 70s. I'm going to live right now, enjoy right now. I don't need to save for the future. So those are the folks who don't want to save. But Brian, there's even another camp. The folks who have been saving and said, you know what? I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing, but man, I just don't like this. And so now there are folks who are not saying, hey, I've realized I've saved too much for retirement. Or some High earners are saying, I've saved too much for retirement, and now it's going to backfire, so I need to back it down. So it seems like no matter whether you have been saving or you haven't saved at all, the thought is, I don't need to save right now. Saving in my 20s is bad. I should not get started on this early. Don't you feel like the world right now rewards the extremes? Absolutely. I mean, I feel like everybody... And whether you're talking about politics or whatever, and, and I'll, I'll put this in financial terms. We've got the the YOLO crowd over here where you got to maximize the instant gratification, go out there and live your best life right now. Epicureans unite. And then you've got over here, uh, you know, the, the people who are basically like, you know what? Um, you, you, you need to save and you, you need to live this miser lifestyle because you're going to maximize the best version of your We don't like any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't like any extreme. I always like to pull the curtain back and try to tell you the reality of the walk towards financial success. And I want you to understand, I do want you to, under, to, to, to enjoy each decade of your life. I want you to have the best version of yourself in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. But it is going to take a balance. Mm-hmm of you've got to take a small portion of today for that more beautiful tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what deferred gratification is. It's the superpower that creates wealth. You're going to have to do it, but you also have to balance it with bedazzling your basic mm-hmm. life. In, in the content meeting, because that video was shown, I think they were in Mexico. Yep, that's right. I was like, I'm not against that. I mean, I remember the first time I went to Cancun. I think my wife and I went on our honeymoon for less than like twelve hundred dollars. It's amazing. I mean, the first time I went on a cruise ship, I think we spent like five hundred dollars a person. I mean, you can travel and have a great life, but dazzle your basic life without breaking the bank. It's when you start looking at Bora Bora and all these other wanderlust dreams out there. You might not be able to afford that unless you are a financial mutant who starts saving and investing and have your army of dollar bills when you're in your 40s. Mm -hmm. That's when you wander lust on that type of stuff. Know the time and place for your journey. All right, let's talk about, as it relates to that idea, knowing the time and place, let's talk about some of the perceptions that exist versus the reality of that situation. So what I just heard you say is there's this perception amongst folks that money's made to be spent. I should not be saving it for the future. I need to be spending it now. But the reality is a little bit different than that, right? Yes, you need to look at money as a tool. It is a vector for you creating a plan to maximize every decade of your life, reach your financial goals. And by the way, there is a reason I've created the instruction manual for money. It's the financial order of operations. Go to moneyguy.com slash resources. You can download a 
free copy. And by the way, if you want to really accelerate, I want you to go to moneyguy.com slash millionaire mission. I got a book coming out next May. It's going to rock your world and giving you a deep dive as well as the origin story on my own journey mm-hmm. into creating that type of success. All right, what about this perception, Brian? There's this perception that money will come back to you, especially if you're a young person. If you're in your 20s, don't worry about it. Don't worry about saving in your 20s. You have plenty of time to save in the future. What's the reality in that scenario? Uh, you know, I had enough of you scream at me, read Die With Zero. Mm-hmm. Go, so I'm, I'm about halfway through it. And I'm not against, because I think we do a good job of balancing out how do you maximize your life but also save for the future. The problem I have is that there is a survivorship bias when people are successful and then they look back and go, I could have spent more money. You're not going to know which dollars were the dollars that started the journey of creating success? And I just know when I look at my millionaire wealth survey that I do every year, I never have anybody saying, I saved too much money. Mm-hmm. They always say, I wish I'd have started sooner. And the reason, moneyguy.com slash resources. If you look at our wealth multiplier, we actually have a tool now that you can use. You can download the resource, but you can also use the tool. You'll see that your money in your 20s is so much more valuable than your money in your 40s, 50s, and beyond. Take advantage of how valuable compounding interest can be when you're young. And a lot of people, it sounds like, at least the the data would suggest, okay, don't save in your 20s, just wait and save later. And they're not. The people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, they're not saving. That's the reason why we have such an anemic savings rate in this country. And that's why when you look at total retirement accounts, the numbers are so low. So clearly... This is not working. Okay, what about this one, Brian? There's a perception that, hey, there's no point in saving for your 60s. Right now, your 60s is so far away. Why on earth would you try to be solving problems that you don't have for 40 years? What is the actual reality as it relates to Well, that? the reality is your life expectancy, you're going to live to be in your 70s and 80s. Um, now, look, as somebody who's now in my 50s, it just hurts to say that out First loud. First time he said it on air. Yeah, I mean, it, it hurts to say it, but I, I'm living my best life mm-hmm. because I have decisions I made in my 20s. And I think that now I think about the my travel budget is probably three three to four times what I made coming out of college. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen without investing for an army of dollar bills. I don't want you living a miser lifestyle where you get to do nothing until you're in your 40s and 50s and 60s. I'm just saying take a little bit of today, just a small little bit. It's that whole saying that you had a coach tell you, if you do it right, you can do it light, meaning it only takes a small bit of today to save. Remember, I found out if I was saving $100 a month in my early 20s, I was going to make me a millionaire. It just doesn't take much. If you do it wrong, you're going to be doing it long. I can just tell you that is the reality of the situation. That's why 20-somethings have something so valuable that all the people are trying to find that fountain of youth to bring back the ability of time to let their money work for them. Don't waste that. Wasting time is more expensive than wasting money. 